Hello lads, lovelies, and everyone in between. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about all the stuff that was talked about during the MRTV Pimax Reality Reveal stream. That was between Sebastian from MRTV and Kevin from Pimax. This is not my first attempt to compress this down to something reasonable that somebody could actually watch. The original stream is more than three hours. My second attempt at getting this to something reasonable was still about an hour. That's still too long. So I'm just going to go through this really quickly because there's a lot to cover. First, I'm going to talk about some of the basic specs. It has a Snapdragon XR2 like what's in the Quest 2 but it's far less chained. The cooling system is far more advanced and has actual proper active cooling now, fans and vents. So it is dramatically faster than what's in the Quest 2 and has a much higher clock. Not only that, but it's actually got far faster memory and disk access. So this is a whole different ball game. The active cooling is, is audible and it was described as about half as loud as a Vive Pro 3. I don't have one of those, so I don't know what that's like, but some of you might know what that means. Uh, it's louder when it's running in PC VR mode rather than standalone mode. So it's working harder to really maximize its potential in Steam VR mode. And a little bit more about that later. It has three microphones this time. I'm assuming some of that's for noise cancelling and that kind of thing, so this should be very good for uh, social VR and stuff like that. Not only as I facial and hand tracking standard. So you get all those, none of those are modules. It is about the same weight as the 8KX, maybe a little bit heavier with the battery, which is on the back of the head. The audio is described as night and day better than what's on say the 8KX. And it's using the onboard XR2 for audio processing and is DTS and THX certified. Very cool. The 12K QLED is the top-end flagship model. That's what we're hearing about. That's what we've all been excited to get. There will be cheaper models, however, and they will also be this year. So the Reality Series will be coming out Q4 this year. And Pimax has been very clear that they are on schedule for Q4. There will not be delays. The amount of onboard storage for use in standalone mode, as we really don't know yet, Kevin had mentioned that the prototype that he had had 128 gig. Hopefully this will be a lot larger on a $2,400 headset. I'd find 256 to be the very bare acceptable minimum for that price tag, guys. Even in PC VR mode, a lot of the work is done on the headset, not being done by your PC. So the uh, audio, the tracking, the IAC tracking, etc., stuff like that is not done on the PC. It's going to be all done on the headset. And they've said that the 12K is in a good place and there should be no major technical issues that will stop it from a Q4 release. So, sounds good. All right, I'm going to talk about modules now. So we know of three so far. There's possibly more, but we know of three. There's the full body tracking module. This is absolutely real. And you will be able to get full body tracking from this device that attaches to the front bottom of the headset. And it uses basically a camera to track you. Sort of, I guess, a bit like a Kinect. But probably a lot better. Uh, a partner company is doing that. That is not being manufactured or made or designed by Pimax. The Lighthouse compatibility faceplate uh, should be available at launch, but may not be. They don't think it's going to be a challenge of any sort. So hopefully it will be. And that will allow you to use Steam VR base stations to use your knuckles or full body tracking system that you already have, etc. And assuming that would work with that ecosystem will continue to work when you get this faceplate. And lastly, there is an AR pass-through module. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about it, but it exists. Uh, it's probably not be out on release, but it uses relatively high resolution cameras and the, those cameras will match the FOV of the headset. Uh, worth quickly noting is that the lighthouse tracking and the AR modules, they're not going to be compatible. They both will fit in the same place. So if you want to, you may have to switch if, depending on what you're doing. Standalone mode 
and some new software. So PyTool is getting replaced. So standalone, the reality series will be much more powerful than the Quest 2. Right now, the standalone settings are configurable, but what they want to have is the applications will have a performance resolution FOV profile that will automatically and seamlessly apply. They say a game similar to Beat Saber should be able to do 150 degrees at 90 hertz. And more complicated games will either say maybe lower the resolution or narrow the FOV. In standalone mode, the resolution will be set to either 2.5 or 4K per eye. PyTool is being replaced by all new software. So quirky PyTool Pi is going to go away. Good. <laughs> it has no real names like Pymax PC Tool or something like that. It will be coming in the very, very late stages. So we don't know exactly when. I may have heard something about this, but it got delayed. It just wasn't ready yet. We'll see. If I know more about it, I'll make sure you guys know more about it. Yeah. This is also going to have the Pymax store, which will sell both standalone and PC VR games and applications that will be optimized for use on Pimax headsets. So I don't know if this will involve like Steam keys or if this is going to be like an Oculus store. We'll find out. Pimax has been working hard to make it very easy and quick to port things from Quest 2 to the new Pimax reality headsets. Well, they're both running XR2, so I wouldn't have anticipated this being a massive challenge. And presumably their software on the headset's going to be some kind of Android, right? Just makes sense. Of course, we don't know yet. But they've made a big effort to make sure that porting games from Quest 2 onto the new reality series has been and will be very easy. Uh, the store at launch is expected to be actually fairly respectable. They've been working behind the scenes. They have SDKs they've been secretly handing out to developers. So by the time that the store and the headset is actually ready to use, there actually should be a decent selection of games and software already on there for us. Okay, a little bit more about the trade-in program. We're all pretty familiar with it by now, I think. Specifically that the Reality Series is meant to be a high-volume headset. Not a niche headset like the Vision series is, right? The AKX is an amazing headset, but it is very much an enthusiast's, enthusiast's model. The Reality Series is meant to be for everyone. So they're expecting to sell a lot of these. And the reason for the trade-in program is they want to have a large enough user base to be compelling for developers to port their games and software over to it. That's why they're having the trade-in program to jumpstart a user base as quickly as possible. That makes sense. Uh, the device is designed to be built and they have the factories already made and ready to go to produce thousands per week of the reality series. So that's a lot. The expected turnaround for the trade-in program is to be quick. Their words were right quick. So when you will, you'll get a web page, you'll be able to sign up for the trading program. That will put you on a list. You don't send them any money. You don't do anything yet. What happens is when your headset is boxed and ready to be shipped off, they send you an email and that's where you actually will purchase your new headset and then send off your old existing one. And then they will immediately send it over. So this is not going to be a very long turnaround. Big thing here, is that they now have local depots basically everywhere. So you won't be shipping to or from China at all. It should all be pretty much local. So that will be very nice. All right, a little bit about the batteries. The batteries are hot swappable. So there's actually a little battery in the headset that will kind of keep the, the lights on where you replace the old battery with a fresh one. That's important because at the moment, you actually need to have the battery on running the system the whole time, even when you're in PC VR mode, because it's still doing a bunch of stuff even in PC VR mode. So right now the batteries are 6,000 milliamp hours. That may change. And again, they are hot swappable. This will come with a charger. At the moment, this only comes with one battery. That could change. I know I would definitely buy a second, maybe even a third battery, depending on what the charge time of these is like. But yes, it does come with it. Uh, it doesn't seem like it, and it probably won't charge the batteries while they're in the headset. That is something that will have to, you'll have to get used to, I suppose. So again, that's kind of important that even when connected to your PC, 
you still need to run this off the internal battery. The controllers. There's brand new controllers. These aren't swords or anything like that. These are inside out tracking controllers. They look almost identical to the Quest controllers. Almost identical. Uh, they have joystick, the same buttons, the same layout, the same ring, same grip button and trigger. All of this tracking technology is from Qualcomm. It's not being developed in-house. Qualcomm has provided the technology here. And this is the latest version of that kind of technology from Qualcomm and is apparently quite a bit better than the Quest 2 and works in even less light. So it can work in dark conditions. So this is more accurate, faster, and better tracking than what's on the Quest 2. It probably will not have finger tracking. The Wi-Fi and the Pimax station. The headset has built-in Wi-Fi 6E. You can use this for wireless gaming, a lot like your Quest 2, but obviously this headset's got much higher resolution and much higher refresh rates. We'll talk about the screen more later, but 6E is nowhere near fast enough for this. For a proper wireless, it's going to have a 60 gigahertz module. We don't know if this is actually going to be Ygig or wireless HD. We hope it's wireless HD because that's actually more bandwidth and faster, which we'll need. That's 6K Pry, right? The 60 gigahertz is line of sight only, very strictly line of sight only. However, the range is quite good. They've tested it and had no problems out to 25 feet. The 60 gigahertz adapter is a separate purchase. So you always get the 6E, and if you want the 60 gigahertz, that looks like a separate purchase. There is a version of it called the Pimax Station. Now, there's some confusion about this, and they finally cleared this up. It's not a PC VR gaming station. This enhances the standalone capabilities. So this ups the resolution and gives you extra storage and allows your headset in standalone mode to play the games at higher graphic settings than they were otherwise. So it's a booster for the standalone mode. It's not for PC VR. You won't be playing, you know, your favorite PC VR titles on this. It's still standalone only. Okay, here's the real meat of it the display. This is actually a 200 hertz display. <laughs> and the FOV is actually even wider than that of the AKX. However, not at the same time. This is a bit like the 5K Super, where the bandwidth is just too limited. I'm going to talk a little bit about the bandwidth in a moment to get, you know, to have your cake and eat it. You can have ultra wide or ultra fast. But there just isn't enough bandwidth in the world right now to have both. So you pick and choose between, you know, the sort of triangle of resolution, FOV, and Hertz. This obviously does have dynamic foveated rendering. That's going to be a big part of this. And that is being done by Toby. And their version of this is called Spotlight. I don't know the first thing about this, but Toby is apparently the supreme experts in this whole field. And a big part of this is actually because of something called foveated transport, which is basically about cramming as much data as possible down the wire or over the Wi-Fi, whichever. It will actually be determining where you're looking at to determine what data actually is being sent to the displays. So that's pretty crazy sounding to me, but very cool. The displays have a dimming backlight, I guess, to make the blacks as deep and awesome as possible. This will have HDR and it's going to be distortion free pretty much across the entire view. So but how this works is basically the, the Toby eye tracking dynamically optimizes the distortion profile based on your eyes. This will auto calculate your IPD with a button press. You just push a button and then it will magically do the IPD for you. And this will have a wider IPD range than the previous models. So it'll be about 15% bigger on both ends of it and say an IPD of 55 will generally be the minimum right now, as opposed to quite a bit higher, what is it, 60 on the AKX? I know mine's at the very bottom, because I'm 60. These are very high contrast ratio displays. They're quite bright. They don't give a number. So this would be a brighter, darker display as well. So that's interesting. This should be really easy on your eyes. Uh, the binocular overlap is a fairly mass of 118 degrees. This is compared to the high 80s of other headsets. So this should be very comfortable and will have the biggest sweet spot of any headset ever made. So we don't know again what all the actual 
trade-offs for the resolution, but they do say that at the maximum FOV, which is greater than the 8KX, by the way, and resolution, which will be 6K per eye, and it will be able to swing that at at least 90 hertz, no problem. They're not 100% sure yet how this will actually connect to your PC with cables. With wireless, obviously, it's going to use one of those technologies I previously mentioned. Right now, it looks like they're using two DisplayPort 1.4 cables, and they have some samples with a 2.0 for a single solution. Though actually getting a graphics card with a DisplayPort 2.0 is a big ask because I have a 3080 tie and I don't think it has it. But they haven't really decided how they're going to do this yet. They described the, basically the resolution, the color, the contrast is so much better. The darks will be extremely black. The colors will be way more accurate. And they've sort of, yeah, they've described it as sort of a cross between LCD and OLED. A fairly bold claim here, I certainly hope is true, is that the clarity is on par with the Vario Aero. Now that is. That's a tall claim. I, I hear the arrow looks pretty damn good. And lastly, the gaming and FPS performance should actually be about the same as the 8KX. So this shouldn't actually be harder to drive than your 8KX. We'll see. But I suppose with the different sort of options for rendering and DFR and that sort of thing, it makes up the difference. And that is the, the three hours of MRTV sort of rambled over for three hours and nine minutes compressed into however long this was. So there we go. Uh, the big thing that I would like to point out is that the standalone mode actually sounds kind of interesting. I was fairly dismissal of that first time I heard it. I was like, right, I have a really powerful PC and when a 4090 exists, I'm going to get one. I'll find some way. I don't need all these organs, right? But the standalone mode actually does sound interesting. It actually sounds like it might look pretty good. I think the most exciting thing out of all of this, though, is their insistence that this is on track, that this will be coming out Q4, that this does work. The only problem they're really having is really just getting the, uh, the wireless capabilities to work as optimal as they need to. And they haven't really decided which standard. They're testing a, whole, a couple in parallel. So that's the only thing that's really not pretty much ready to go. That is the latest on the Pimax Reality Series. All right, that is the summary. Thanks for coming by. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, share your own thoughts and opinions. And I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.